Schizophrenia is a brain illness that usually appears in different forms that involves senses, movement, behaviors, and even the thoughts. Someone may ask, what are the symptoms of schizophrenia? We have the positive symptoms that may include hallucinations such as hearing and seeing things that aren't there. We also have strange behaviors such as making repeated movements for no reasons. We do have delusions, the idea that only the person in schizophrenia believes are real and that they cannot be changed by anyone or by proof. We also have the negative symptoms that range from not wanting to see friends and family, not experiencing or showing feelings. The, f the exact cause of schizophrenia is not yet known, but some factors have been implicated to, co to be causing schizophrenia. One of them being genetic predisposition. predisposition. In genetic pre predisposition, the research has shown that in non-twins, there's 8% chance of developing schizophrenia. So you have a first degree relative with schizophrenia, the chance of you developing schizophrenia is around 10%. And if you have one parent with schizophrenia, there's a chance of you developing schizophrenia is around 12%. But if both parents have schizophrenia, there's an increase in chance that to about 40% for you to develop schizophrenia. In twins, that are diazogotic twins, 12 to 15% chance of you to develop schizophrenia if the other twin has schizo. Then in monozygotic twins, there's a very high predisposition of about 47 to 50 percent or chance of the other twin developing schizophrenia. Though from all these things, there's no specific genome that has been identified to be linked to schizophrenia yet. Another factor is uh, neurotransmitter abnormalities, whereby we are focusing mostly on dopamine, serotonin, and glutamate and GABA. So the first one, dopamine, in patients taking uh, <clears throat> drugs like amphetamines and cocaine that increase dopaminergic activity, they have high levels of de developing psychotic symptoms. Also, infections also have been implicated in this as a causative agent, whereby in the recent onset of schizophrenia, there is also increased levels of antibodies towards uh, c c CMV, that is cytomegalovirus, infection and also happy simplex virus one also other factor is psychological and social influences whereby psychological stress can activate the, the vulnerability if you are vulnerable to schizophrenia it can activate that vulnerability and also predispose you to schizophrenia and also other factors in the family like hostility and also uh, more, more factors that like disagreements in the family can predispose you to schizophrenia if you are also vulnerable. You are a patient that is vulnerable to schizophrenia already. Majorly, these are features that can be seen in imaging. PET scan and MRI are the best modalities that reveal brain changes structurally. In majority of the imaging, we tend to see cerebral atrophy, which is basically meaning reduction in your brain volume, specifically at the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe. Your parietal lobe plays a key role in hearing and memory, which we both tend to see mostly in schizophrenic patients to be affected. This is because the tracts that are responsible in the white matter connecting frontal and the temporal lobe are interfered. Because also of reduced blood flow, cerebral atrophy becomes imminent into these patients. So during the cause, from early age onset, regardless, we know atrophy is mostly seen in elderly, but in schizophrenic patients, even during early onset, 
it's characterized this feature of atrophy regardless of their age on, of onset. So number one is smoking. About 80% of people with schizophrenia smoke, which is a huge number compared to the 20% of the people remaining. Therefore, smoking is harmful to your health. It can cause a lot of health effects such as heart diseases, lung diseases, and cancers. Smoking also interferes with the medication that we give in schizophrenia, therefore it's good to avoid. The second thing is alcohol. Alcohol is a depressant. Um, alcohol majorly interferes with your brain. It interferes with the happy chemicals in your brain such as the serotonin and the dopamine. So you tend to feel more happier and more relaxed when you're drinking, but that won't be the case the following morning. You tend to wake up more depressed, more anxious the following morning, which will interfere and which will make your schizophrenia symptoms even worse. Therefore, alcohol is also good to avoid when you're having schizophrenia. The third thing to avoid are the recreational drugs such as cocaine and marijuana. These drugs, um, about 7 in 10 uh, of people with schizophrenia take these drugs. Um, these drugs also interfere with the medication that we give in schizophrenia, therefore they are also good to avoid. Thank you. If you are considering to start a new relationship, it's best if you talk to your doctor or your therapist regarding this new change in your life that you want to make because they will direct you in the way to go about it. If you are already in a relationship and your partner does not know that you are schizophrenic, please try to be open and also include him or her in your therapy sessions. So it is possible for someone living with schizophrenia to have a positive social relationship. This is because many people living with schizophrenia have successful and healthy relationships. Schizophrenia requires a lifelong treatment, even if when the symptoms have subsided. Uh, medication is the co cornerstone in the management of schizophrenia. And psychotics are the commonly prescribed drugs for the management of schizophrenia. They are classified in two classes. We have the first generation and psychotic and we have the second generation and psychotic. We have a, a non-pharmacological treatment which involves a, the social intervention. One, we have family therapy, stop individual therapy, where the family is educated and also the, the, the patient also is educated and they are able to to manage the patient and also the patient is able to interact well with the family. Secondly, we have vocational rehabilitation support where we, we give support to the patient who, who are suffering from schizophrenia to find jobs and keep jobs. Pharmacological treatment alone cannot solve the devastating consequences caused by this condition. Therefore, psychotherapy also plays a part in the management of a patient who is having this condition. Use of psychosocial intervention helps in the recovery of people who are suffering from schizophrenia. The psychosocial intervention includes the following. We have individual therapy, family therapy, social skills, training, vocational rehabilitation, and supported employment, where we help them get job and also keep the job. For those patients who do not respond to treatment, be it a drug therapy or psychotherapy, an ECT may be considered for them.